there's an old Yiddish proverb that says, God gave burdens, also shoulders. <laughs> I love that so much. But have you ever felt that your shoulders were too weak to bear your burdens, much less someone else's? This is one of the reasons I think that we are so graced with love and hope in our own church family, because together we get to bear one another's burdens. I want to share the scripture, how it comes in the letter to the Galatian community. So Galatians chapter six, one verse, chapter two, Galatians six, two, I'm going to share it to you in three different forms. And I want you to listen deeply for some key words here. The first one comes from the new revised standard version, and it says, bear one another's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. In the voice paraphrase, the same verse is translated to say, shoulder each other's burdens. And then you will live as the law of the anointed teaches us. And finally, the message from Eugene Peterson states Galatians to say this, stoop down, reach out to those who are oppressed, share their burdens, and so complete Christ's law. So in all three of those, what you see is this notion of bearing of shoulders, this shoulder ministry, right? Stooping down, sharing, and in all ways, no matter the word, it becomes a privilege to help to lift the burdens of others and being in community together, that means that God is using our collective shoulders to lift up the people of God. And while it is so easy to see only our own needs, there are always people around us who are hurting. Sometimes we see their needs and sometimes the needs are so personal that we never even know them. But whether a person's need is known or unknown, can we come to an agreement that says everyone has burdens and God gives the church the privilege of ministering to each other? You know, I'm in spaces often where the burdens seem so immense. I know you are too. But as a community of faithful folk, I know that we all want to be helpful, that we want to share the load. And there are a number of ways that I have found that can be helpful in that space. And the first one is praying. And while that might not seem like a big consequential thing, it is not the least of the actions, but one of the greatest ways we have to lift someone. If you're feeling the need to alleviate suffering for someone, then first go to prayer. Stop. Pray for hope. Pray for mercy. If you're not really sure, say, I don't know the need, but I want this person to experience peace. Amen. It's that easy. I'm also a big believer in snail mail and not the kind that is the bills and the junk mail kind, but the kind that lifts with encouraging words. Someone that comes when a, you write a small note of appreciation, of encouragement, of help, of hope. It doesn't have to be a long epistle. You're not Paul, right? Just a few sentences. They tell someone that you love them, that you appreciate them. You might be surprised how much it uplifts not only their spirit, but yours. It's a vital habit, and I don't want us to overlook its power. And if you see someone that you know has needs, offer up some verbal praise and lift them beyond the I am praying for you. Make it more specific, like, you are a blessing to me in this world. I am so glad that I saw you today. How powerful are those words? Find a way to encourage them for actions in the past that lifted you. Something like, I remember that card that you sent me after my brother died. I still have it in a folder. I want you to know that I'm thinking of you in the same way. See, all of that is exceedingly meaningful. Pay attention. And if you want to offer a specific act of hospitality, then consider slipping a restaurant gift card or grocery card in the mail. Take over some paper goods and drop them on the front stoop. It doesn't always have to be a casserole. That's our go-to, right? We're church people. You could offer to extend hospitality to extended family who might be coming in for a tragedy. There are simple ways to lend helping hands that create ripples of mercy and hope. And that throughout today, I hope that your mind begins to generate a numbers of ways to be a part of that shoulder ministry for those that are in need. Let us pray. God, make our shoulders big and wide to bear the burdens of your people, I pray. 